Whistleblower behind the exposure of the Bush administration's domestic spy program has revealed his identity. In an interview with Newsweek, former Justice Department official Thomas Tam says he personally called the New York Times from a Washington, D.C. subway payphone in 2004 to tell them about the program. Tam was working as an attorney in the Justice Department's Office of Intelligence Policy and Review. The secretive unit oversees surveillance of terrorist and espionage targets. The decision to become a whistleblower has permanently altered Thomas Tam's life. His home was raided last year. FBI agents have questioned his family and friends. He no longer works for the government. He suffers from depression and is $30,000 in debt. Tam still faces possible arrest. Despite his current situation, he said he has few regrets. Tam told Newsweek, I thought this was something the other branches of the government and the public ought to know about so they could decide, do they want this massive spying program to be taking place? Newsweek correspondent Michael Isakoff broke the story on Tam's coming forward. It's the cover article in the latest issue of Newsweek called The Fed Who Blew the Whistle. Michael Isakoff joins us now from Washington, D.C. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Michael. Good to be with you, Amy. Well, why don't you start by telling this story from the beginning? Um, how was it uh, that, um, uh, that Mr. Tam discovered this and just what his background was? Sure. And it, it, I have to say, his background is one of the most fascinating uh, 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 parts of this story. Uh, he is a, uh, a, a veteran prosecutor, but comes from a, a family steeped in FBI history. Uh, his uncle, Edward Tam, was a top aide to J. Edgar Hoover, who invented the name FBI in 1935 and its motto, Fidelity, Bravery, uh, Integrity. Uh, his father, his father, Quinn Tam, was also a top aide to Hoover, an assistant director of the FBI and the head of the FBI's crime lab. When Thomas Tam was a youngster, was a toddler, he played under the desk of J. Edgar Hoover during FBI ceremonies, and he watched John F. Kennedy's inauguration from uh, the balcony of J. Edgar Hoover's uh, office suite, then at the Justice Department. Um, so this is a man who is very uh, steeped in the ethos of law enforcement. He he chose a somewhat different path uh, uh, to become a public prosecutor rather than a uh, FBI agent. He served for years as a top uh, prosecutor in the Montgomery County State's Attorney's Office, and then in 1998 got a job at the Justice Department, first in the Capital Case Unit, the unit that reviewed uh, death penalty cases, and while there received, uh, as part of that unit, one of the D Justice Department's highest awards, the John Marshall Award, that was personally given to him by by then Attorney General Janet Reno. Um, he stayed on uh, during the uh, uh, era of John Ashcroft as Attorney General uh, at the Capitol Case Unit, and then transferred in 2003 to the Office of Intelligence Policy and Review, which is probably the most sensitive unit in the Justice Department. It is the unit that handles uh, national security wiretaps of suspected terrorists and, uh, and spies, uh, and, and presents the applications for for wiretaps to the FISA court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance uh, Court, uh, set up by Congress in 1978 to ensure that such wiretaps have legitimate probable cause. This was set up to avoid the kind of well-publicized abuses by the U.S. by U.S. intelligence agencies that were exposed by the Church Committee in uh, uh, in the late 1970s. So while Tom Tam is working at the Office of Intelligence Policy Review. He sort of stumbles upon some unusual procedures that are going on, uh, that certain wiretap uh, requests from the intelligence agencies are handled uh, in different ways, under special procedures, where they the, 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 these wiretap uh, requests, which involved information gleaned from something he only knew was called the program, uh, 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 could, uh, could only go to the chief judge of the FISA court, not the other judges of the court, and those applications could only be signed by the attorney general, not the deputy attorney general, as all other uh, applications could. And this puzzled him. Why are there these unusual procedures for for something called the program. What is the program? What are we doing here? And as he recounts it in the story, he began to ask questions about this uh, 
uh, within the uh, uh, within the office, the office uh, OIPR as it's called. And basically, he was shut down. He was told, uh, "Don't raise questions about this. Uh, stop talking about it." One of his supervisors tells him that the program is quote, and as Ta Tam recalls it, probably illegal. At another point. Shortly after that, uh, he runs into the deputy chief of the office of OIPR and learns that there is a great deal of consternation because the chief judge, the one who is only getting those program applications, has raised serious objections to it uh, and that uh, she's going to shut the program down and even the attorney general could get indicted over this. Uh, now, again, Tam is struck by this. What is this all about? Out, why would the attorney general uh, get indicted over something that the Justice Department was doing? Um, he tried to take it to some uh, a former colleague who was working at the Senate Judiciary Committee to raise concerns. Does Congress know about what the program is, about what's going on inside the Justice Department, and was told uh, that uh, by this former colleague that he shouldn't be asking questions about this. This is uh, 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 he should just uh, uh, mind his own. Business. So Tam, as he uh, uh, put put it in the uh, series of interviews that I uh, did with him, uh, was uh, deeply troubled by this, agonized over what to do. The idea of lawlessness at the Justice Department really angered him, uh, and he felt he needed to blow the whistle. He didn't fully understand what he was blowing the whistle on. I should make that clear. He didn't, at this point, really know what the program was. He knew it had something to do with the National Security Agency. He didn't know what precisely they were doing that was raising such alarm bells within the Justice Department and by the chief judge of the FISA court. Uh, but finally, at one point, he does um, uh, uh, duck into a Washington, D.C. metro stop, the Judiciary Square, Square metro stop, and uh, as he recounts it, his, his body was trembling, his heart was pounding, it was, uh, he was very nervous. He slips into a partially concealed uh, uh, phone booth and calls reporter Eric Lickblad of the New York Times. Ultimately, this is a story that won the New York Times Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize. Uh, both Eric um, and James Risen wrote books about this. Talk about what uh, he told them, though they also had other sources, and then what happened right. to Thomas Tam from there, Michael Isikoff. Right. Uh, uh, Tam was, was essentially the guy who tipped the paper off. Uh, he wasn't able to tell them what the program was, and that's pretty clear if you read uh, Eric Lickblau's book. He talks about getting a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a blind phone call from a walk-in source who he didn't know, uh, who told him uh, about uh, troubling developments inside the Justice Department and how the attorney general could get indicted, uh, but he didn't, uh, but he was madly vague and was wasn't quite sure what it was all about, but this spurred Lickblau on to try to figure out what Thomas Tam had stumbled upon. Uh, he consulted with his uh, uh, colleague James Risen, and eventually, uh, after a lengthy period of time, it was 18 months from the time Thomas Tam first made his phone call to the time the New York Times finally broke the story three years ago yesterday, uh, front page, December 15, 2005, that President Bush had secretly authorized the National Security Agency for the first time to uh, eavesdrop on uh, conversations and emails of, uh, of, uh, of, of U.S. Uh, citizens. Uh, now, uh, from that moment, of course, uh, while that story provoked an uproar in Washington, uh, demands uh, uh, by congressional Democrats, including then-Senator Barack Obama, for hearings, uh, denunciations of the Bush administration for, um, uh, for violating the FISA law, uh, and uh, as you mentioned, the New York Times winning the Pulitzer Prize the next year. Thomas Tam uh, comes under scrutiny by the FBI. They, they launch a major criminal investigation uh, of him as the uh, leaker. Uh, Tam suspects they got on to him because they accessed his uh, Justice Department computer and, uh, and saw the email he sent to the former colleague on, uh, on Capitol Hill asking to get together, and they tracked uh, 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 that woman down, and she told him 
about Tam's concerns, and Tam apparently acknowledges that he did indicate that uh, if Congress wasn't going to do anything, that he thought he might have to go to the press. So that's how they get on to him. And the uh, investigation has been relentless ever since. Uh, last summer, in the uh, summer of August uh, of 2007, uh, uh, 18 FBI agents in flak jackets and guns show up at his, uh, uh, at his home in suburban, uh, in suburban Maryland, uh, raid the home, haul away his, uh, his computers, his, la his children's laptops, his personal possessions, books, his Christmas card list. Uh, uh, they grill his wife and two of his three children. Uh, they've uh, since been relentless in tracking down uh, his, uh, his friends and former associates looking for Tam's motivations in going to the press. They are, uh, they are concerned that the public might view him as a do-gooder, and if they do, it would be hard to bring a